Chair, appreciate that. Appreciate the committee favorable consideration. Um, next on our committee, um, um, I'd like to um, ask uh, Chairman Clay Purple to uh, speak to 458. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, you got me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do want to, and I hate to correct my chairman, who I love with all my heart, uh, but I, I'll be honest with you, 8 o'clock in the morning, I think it would be wonderful for that uh, Dickie's Good Peach Ice Cream. So, um, so I think that's the only thing I've heard you say wrong today, Mr. Chairman, but I did want to correct the record on that. I'll remember that. I had not many days. I'm, I'm just one wrong. <laughs> okay so we've talked about this bef bill before uh and and i do feel a little uncomfortable presenting this bill as i did vote no on uh the hemp the inaugural hemp bill uh, but i do feel like this is important that we provide the belt and suspenders that we put in um safeguards in the industry i was reading an article this week um or this weekend they had had found some uh cbd in pennsylvania had fentanyl and uh heroin uh in it uh i know a similar situation in alabama last week we want to make sure that which georgia consumers consume they know what's in it and that's what this bill does it takes 18 pages to get there but um i say 18 it's actually only 16 but um there is a lot of language and i'm going not going to walk through all of it as we did last time i'm going to talk to you about changes i made from the last bill that we looked at and then entertain some questions and and i have i think several people that might want to speak on this today um <clears throat> so on lines 33 34 35 we specified the 0.3 percent on a dry weight basis uh, to make sure that um, this is the federal standard as it is now. If the feds decide to change later, uh, then they would need to be actioned by this body. But right now, the 0.3% THC is where it's at. Uh, at the point, at the proper moment, uh, though, Mr. Chairman, on line 33, I would like to take out the isomers of Delta 9 THC um, on line 33, as well as on line 260 and 261 isomers of delta 9 thc and i have um someone who knows why we're doing that uh that will speak afterwards so please don't peg me down on that one as it is um somewhat difficult for me to answer uh, with my limited knowledge set uh, i did take out on the first paragraph of your last bill uh it included that the uh, revenue generated from this uh, particular um, uh, code section would then go back to the Department of Agriculture. Had some pushback on a similar bill in the Senate side. And so as a general rule, it goes to the general fund of the state. Uh, and that way we could keep up with it. My friends on appropriations will, uh, will thank me profusely for that uh, particular 
uh, although I would like to see uh, the revenues go back to the Department of Ag. Uh, it seemed to be a sticking point in the uh, in the Senate. Uh, I had someone ask me about all of the uh, residual solvents that we are uh, beginning like on 995 nine uh, and following. Uh, and this is to make sure that our product is safe. Uh, these are the solvents that are used that, that can be used to make the products that we use if they have acetates and hexanes and toluene uh, that, that would, could provide for an unsafe product for our consumer. Uh, and so it is a fairly voluminous bill, uh, but in order to make sure that we have all the boxes checked to make sure that the product that we provide, uh, that has a QR code on it, uh, that what it says is in there is in there and nothing else. Um, there was one additional change, uh, on line 148, 149. Previously, there was only a background check required at uh, when the license was um, applied for. Um, I, I added language that seemed to be a sticky point. This is there again. And the providers for background check be everything. Uh, there still must be an affidavit signed annually, making sure there's no changes. But we will actually do a background check in this language uh, there every three years. I would there again like to thank uh, Gen General Counsel for uh, Legislative Counsel for uh, taking my phone calls yet again, um, and and there is another um, spot that I meant to talk to Department of Ag about before I got up here uh, that is not a change that I think uh, might be effective instead of January 1, 2024, the effective date. I am concerned that we need this as soon as possible. Uh, and I know that not wanting to put the Department of Ag at a, at a, at a tough spot right now, but perhaps July 1 uh, of this year, uh, because I, I honestly believe that consumers are at risk when we don't have this bill. So um, those are the three changes that I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, that's not in this, uh, taking the isomers out and adding in the effective date to July 1. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your work on it um, here and uh, trying to make these uh, products safe for consumers. I, it's been a concern of mine for quite some time. And uh, thank you for your work on this bill. I know Chairman Corbett, Corbett through the years, he put a lot of work in the, in the help. And uh, thank him uh, and others uh, for this. So um, it, just, just so, so the committee knows, we're going to come back with a sub on Wednesday. Is, is, that, okay. the, is, is that the um, status here or what we'll do? We can talk about this and ask some questions, but we'll be ready with a, with a sub to uh, move on, on Wednesday. You're the chairman. Uh, sir, it's your pleasure. Here, I, I sir, think that's friend. probably the best uh, thing we can do today, but um, um, we, we can get those changes made and have it ready um, uh, for Wednesday. So, um that, that's what I'd like to do. Okay. Uh, uh, we do have some questions. Um, I'll, I'll go to um, uh, Lewis Ward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I ask my question, which LC are you reading from? Uh, LC 510358S. Okay, great. If it's a sub. Um, thank you, Chairman Perkle. Did, did that coincide with what you had? It, it, it does. Thank I you. had both of them, so. Okay. Lines two, 218 through 222. Um, and the, the current code has parameters for um, a minimum bond and yes. a maximum bond. We took that out and it just states $50,000. Is that a minimum or a maximum? Uh, this is just what the bond shall be. So it's both a minimum and a maximum. Thank you. Number 10, um, you get, okay. I'm sorry for the uh, small room we have. It's, um, I apologize. Um, who is, um, uh, uh, Representative Thomas, is that you? Yes. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't have a mic, so he Oh, okay. All right, you're, you're on. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. My question, um, 
with the uh, every three years uh, the background check. Yes. For someone who has a license, and let's say something happens in three years and they have gotten in trouble, um, what are the consequences? You just had a look. Uh, you don't get a license. Okay. So you know we will not reward bad behavior. Um, so. Will they have an opportunity to sell their business? Um, I would think that they would be that you would certainly want to liquidate your business if you couldn't do the license. <laughs> so I would, we have not addressed that here, but uh, I would think common sense, um, no license, no money. I need someone else to hold this thing, but they also had to f pass background check. Yes. Thank you. Um, representative, uh, Thomas. Thank you, chairman. Thank you for bringing this bill. And you mentioned earlier about um, the safety. So we know it's over a hundred types of cannabinoids. And when we do the testing, are you familiar with how many labs are in the state of Georgia? Or does this bill allow for testing outside of the state of Georgia? Uh, so this will be an independent lab uh, within the state of Georgia that is um, certified. So independent certified lab. And I do, I do know we have at least one in the state, and I'm not sure how many. And I'm familiar with just one myself. Is that the mm -hmm. one in Macon? Yes. Okay. And I so, know there's one in Macon. I don't know how many. Okay. So in prep, would you yield for one more question? Yes, I will. In preparation for this bill to go forth and, and having many vendors in hemp, would that one location suffice or... So um, that is such an easy question. I'll have James Allen Bryant's dad, Russ, answer that for me if that would be possible. That would be great. Thank you. Um, the way the bill now, come, you need to come up here, my friend. Uh, is that okay, Mr. Chairman? I yes. didn't mean to jump yeah, uh, cool. around, but he is uh, someone that does have uh, an expertise in this area, and he will be able to answer. Uh, tell who you are and who you represent. Good afternoon. I'm Russ Bryant. Um, I'm a was second century uh down in south georgia osceola the answer to the question about the lab the ios that according to this bill as long as it is approved by the state so there are a lot of labs out there all across the country as long as they have the ios standardization then then i think it, it will it's my understanding that we would be able to test that there okay thank you. and i see council is shaking his head that that's okay. And your second question was how many are more? Okay. Well, now would that, go, now would, would that one suffice? I mean, anticipating you, you new know, vendors in the, in this movement and Georgia being num heading towards number one in health. Currently, being that we're the only processor in the state of Georgia, obviously there's going to be some lag there. You know, we're wanting competition. We're wanting people to come in. It's it's to me, it's the same sense of why Lowe's builds right beside Home Depot. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to bring this to Georgia. We want to make it strong. Um, I know that the lab mm -hmm. in, in Macon, I think they can process a, a full panel about every 15 minutes is what, what she's told us. Um, how many? 100 a day. So that would be a lot of testing. And I think that there will be a lot of testing at the beginning of this mm -hmm. and being that the test is good for 12 months it, the testing should slow down unless we have a lot of companies come in fairly quickly thank you you're welcome thank you um representative bentley thank you mr chairman chairman perkle thank you for your work on this bill i'm just curious to know um what does how would this bill actually impact the two land grant institutions in the state, Come Fort on. Valley and at UGA. Come on, I really thought you was going to ask how it's going to impact the funeral home business. <laughs> and I would say it's going to drive less people to your funeral home because we're going to have a cleaner product. So uh, I, I would think all of our land grant institutions that perform um, a, a lot of research uh, in ag areas mm -hmm. will be positive influenced by this. Yes, okay. Okay. I do. Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, would it would it be possible, um, as 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 I introduced uh, Mr. Russ Bryant, 
I introduced him as James Allen Bryant's dad, who I taught in Sunday school, um, whose wife is going to have a baby Wednesday. He will not be with us on Wednesday. I am almost completely positive. So would it be possible uh, to further the knowledge that he has regarding the isomers of the Delta 9 THC and taking that that we'll look at uh, on Wednesday, taking that out of the next sub and, and have him comment then on that now because he will yeah. not be available. Let's do that. All right, do you just want me to take questions on the isomers and esters um, or just do an explanation of what they are? I guess will be my question. Explain why it's important to take it out, if that's okay. So the esters currently, DEA come out with a ruling, and that would be your um, XOTHC, THCO, any acetates, and they have made a ruling on that. Um, that was done two weeks ago to where those are basically illegal regardless. So the way this bill states at the 25 milligrams, I think that we should leave that at the point three, which is on the federal level. The isomers, um, they have not made a ruling on. The isomers are more of your delta eight, delta six, delta 10. Those occur naturally in the plant on smaller levels than they do than the delta nine will or smaller levels than CBG or CBD will. So leaving the, leaving the isomers in there are important to me because it is something that we can extract from the actual plant material. It's also something that we're seeing a lot of medicinal benefits from. We're having users that stop using other things, you know, opioids, things like that, that, that will use the Delta-8 at smaller milligrams. So we're seeing that there is a benefit there. There is no benefit to two and 300 milligram products that we see on shelves currently. That's why the bill limit it, limits it to 25 milligrams per serving. Members of the committee, y'all need to hear that. that. That's what part of this bill's about, is knowing the strength of these products and what's in them and, and the dosage and those type of things. Is, um, so thank you for that. Um, we're going to move on. Uh, have we got some other questions from the committee? Uh, Representative Hagen, have you got any? you good. Um, we've got some other people who want to speak to this bill. We're going to try to limit it to a, a couple of minutes. And really, thank you for uh, those comments. Uh, and we're going to try to keep it specific to the bill. Uh, I got Reggie Deese from the Green Toad Farm. Are you here? Well, I didn't think my name was going to get called. That's, well, thank you. Uh, I just want to add that I totally agree with this bill. Uh, we have to create those safety uh, nets with this product as the first licensed grower in the state who we're also vertically integrated. So we do not only grow the plant, we created a whole product line. And for us, I think a lot of the problems is coming in from out of state. If you look at growers in other states, they use pesticides, they use things that they're not supposed to to grow these plants, unlike Georgia. You know, we're Georgia grown, so we use more fruit, food grade stuff to grow our product. We grow it with love, right? We make sure that everything we're doing is 100% in compliance. The problem is when this stuff comes in from other states, we have to have a way to test it to keep Georgia safe. So I'm all for that. And I think that that'll help protect us in the state and protect our consumer as we grow this, this industry. We're agriculture, right? And that's, that's what I want to truly influence. The hemp industry is agriculture. It's not cannabis. It's agriculture. And we need to do what we can to strengthen this commodity in the agriculture industry. And that starts with protecting it through this bill as well. So that's that's my pitch on that. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, we're going to take a few more. Uh, Molly Beavers, Quantum Fair Trade. 
you come to the podium and speak to the bill. Greetings, everyone. Um, this is my first time doing this. I'm really excited. Um, I'm in total agreement as well. I am in the community and I'm seeing the effects of fentanyl on like on the ground level. And I mean, people aren't just dying. People are also just like slowing down <laughs> in a way where like people are like very sleepy and almost, I don't want to say zombified, but it's, it's actually a little scary. Um, and the first time I heard about fentanyl, I thought it was a joke. I think a lot of people think it's a joke. Um, and I appreciate that not only is Georgia pioneering as far as hemp is concerned, but yes, uh, the testing is super important. My, my number one question is, along with this bill, um, there's a line in there about to provide for a venue. I want clarity on what venue means. Um, does that mean venue to grow? Does that mean to provide more testing centers, more processing centers? Um, because I, I don't think that one processing center is gonna do it. Um, and, and people talk about the legalization of, or further legalization of marijuana in the state of Georgia, but we know we can't do that without more testing centers, more processing centers. So does the, to provide for venue speak to that? Well, you can um, speak to the author of the bill. Um, I think uh, anybody's open to uh, to open up a testing center. I know a medical marijuana uh, bill, who's totally separate from this hemp bill, uh, addresses testing uh, on that side um, of the um, thing. So, um, but speak to the author later. Appreciate your comments. Thank you for coming. Um, also. Um, David from Cher uh, Cherio.org, please come and uh, introduce yourself. Let us know what's on your mind. Thank you very much for having me. My name is David Radabaugh. My company is Cherico.org. I actually just ran for agriculture commissioner as a libertarian candidate, unfortunately didn't win. As a matter of fact, Molly Beavers, the previous speaker, was also ran as agriculture commissioner as an independent. So we're both here from a kind of a knowledgeable standpoint. And what I'd like to address is really, I think we're kind of being misled a little bit here by these different terminologies. And we're also being misleading the public of Georgia by trying to create this difference between cannabis and hemp. Cannabis is the overall plant strain. Hemp is a low THC version of cannabis. Cannabis is often known because it has a higher quality or quantity of something called Delta 9 THC. So we have somehow tried to separate these individual cannabinoids saying that Delta 8, because it's derived from hemp, which gives the almost same exact response to the human body as Delta 9 that was derived from cannabis. So as we spend time talking about what and how we should e make certain of these chemicals illegal, while indeed we already have legalized other ones, is a misuse of your time and it's a misdirection of our public. So what I really hope that we do is we get some chance of someone to come in here, address the group very directly about what cannabis is. It's not a mystical plant that changes any, it is part of the hemp family. So we have to start addressing those things realistically. We are behind the times from all the other states around us as far as our legislative activity in this, in this arena. We're missing out on health benefits. We're putting people in jail who shouldn't be put in jail for this. All of these reasons are one that we should take time to really understand that the cannabis plant is part of the same thing that we've already legalized through hemp. As we try to backdoor these individual laws to pigeonhole how we're gonna prosecute and criminalize use of this plant further, all we're doing is penalizing our voters, the citizens of Georgia. So what I suggest is we take time and we actually redo this bill. We actually go one step further and really understand what legalization of marijuana means to the state. It's not gonna create a bunch of zombies. And I said often on the campaign trail, anyone who wants to smoke weed is smoking weed. 
What we're doing well, here today you. is not stopping uh, we're, that. We're, we're running out of time. Thank you for your thoughts on, on marijuana legalization, I guess, is what uh, we're talking about. But um, Well, thank also, you. sir, if I might, just one more. I'm really I, talking about understanding the individual Well, this committee has been dealing with that. Uh, when some person says that one is legal and one is not, that is individually misleading. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michael um, Hart's from Georgia Hemp Association. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, if you want to speak uh, anything else to the bill, thank you. Um, Oh, Catherine Russell could speak to it. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got one more speaker. Could we? Okay. Could we have oh, Russ Bryant? Yes, sir. Uh, Russ Bryant. Oh, you've already done. I'm sorry. Um. Oh. Aviva. Oh, this wouldn't be a hearing without you here. Do you bring a friend? If he's going to talk. Um, but yeah, that's definitely metaphorical, the invisibility of me because of what I'm talking about, which is the invisibility of hemp grain. Thank you for having me, by the way. Um, my name is Aviva Bubuzela, and I founded the Georgia Hemp Economic Revival Organization over... 10 years ago now. And Scribbles and I, we educate children and peep everyone about the benefits of industrial hemp, which does not include, you know, anything smokable or anything like that. And it's incredible. I mean, we, this one pack of hemp seeds, if you added it to your ice cream, it would make you more insulative sensitive. So insulative, insulin uh, resistance means you might be getting a foggy head. You might be getting a little sleepy. So if you put this as sprinkles, and I think it's really yummy, then you counteract mm -hmm. that. And so we're talking about this incredible nutrition, manganese, magnesium, potassium, omegas, every single amino acid the body needs. And so I think it's dangerous to not have this accessible to everyone because malnutrition leads to erratic behavior, disease, bouts of aggression. And I think a lot of us have malnutrition without realizing it because in the 40s, we stopped our relationship with this food. We might not have all been eating it, but our animals were. And so that meat had more omegas in it. It had more everything in it. So, so my issue is we have consumable hemp on the bill, but it doesn't include this. The feds have defined industrial hemp as any cannabis with less than 0.3% THC, which the farm bill this year is going to present 1%. We define it in this bill as anything non-consumable. So I think that's an issue with the definition if we're going to include our amazing hemp seeds and the hemp protein powder and uh, hemp sprouts. So this is not actually hemp sprouts. Um, I haven't started that yet, but that is also legal, and that has bioflavonoids. Thank you. We're mm -hmm. going to move on. Appreciate you coming. Can I say Hope you can come back. Just about the processing fee. If right. we define the industrial hemp and other things, why can't we define a lower processing fee? Because the industrial side of hemp need, you know, cotton is subsidized even. They can't afford a high processing fee that we have. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank Chairman, you for your time. Chairman Corbett has a question. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And considering the number of new members we have on this committee, I think it would be a disservice if we did not get to hear from Squiggles. <laughs> I really do. I mean, they've never heard from him. Yeah. Representative oh. Corbett, I love you. <laughs> you are so sweet, and you're the one that can change the world by, you know, opening up a hemp fuel processing plant so we can have gasoline. I mean, you're very talented. Thank you so much. I did email all of you, so you have my emails if you have any questions. And Scribbles and I would be happy to put on a private show for you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chairman Corbett. 
um i apologize to our committee we really i, I didn't realize we only had an hour today uh, when we reserved this room um we look forward to um chairman bringing this uh bill back um uh, uh we, we chairman's worked hard on this so we're gonna move on um and we'll be back uh on wednesday morning i hope uh um with some more uh of that so um i'm gonna move on i i, I don't want to run out of time at the end um uh, we have um our our citrus industry in south georgia is uh is really growing it's new and it's growing and uh new representative chas cannon has a bill that i want to hear for the first time today uh concerning support of our um our uh, commodity uh, our citrus industry uh i know i have uh saw my friend linda savelle here all the way from south georgia who's really been instrumental in uh, 